Karen Hernandez. Um, I'm also known as Karen Rabadan on social media. That's the name that I go for. Um, it's also one of my additional last names. But I'm a high school math teacher at Shadow Hills High School in Indio, California. And if you don't know where Indio's at, you probably know about the famous Coachella Festival. So that's basically where I live. The desert's my playground. So a little bit about me. Um, I've been teaching for eight years. Um, I've done two years in middle school. My first year was seventh grade. Second year was eighth grade. And then for the past six years, I've been teaching at a high school level at Shadow Hills. Our, slo our slogan is Nights Do It Right. So I'm very big on promoting our students and just the school culture. Um, I've taught here at the high school level, uh, Math 1, CP, the college prep, which it might be known in other schools as Integrated Math 1. I also teach the honors course for Integrated Math 1, um, along with Integrated Math 2. Uh, the accelerated course where we have three years of math being taught in two years along with a study skills class, which is for students uh, with targeted intervention who were pre-identified based on a data that we gathered from multiple measures. Um, with that being said, I work at a district where um, Google Apps, Google Education is very big and it's very promoted. There's a lot of trainings on it. So Google Classroom, since I uh, crossed over to the high school setting, that was the first thing we got trained on, how to use anything Google. So. From there, Google Classroom became the thing to do in the classroom. So with, with, it, with that forum, um, I share, let's say, um, any kind of review work. I share um, anything from videos that I want students to review, uh, quick little exit tickets or warm-ups, uh, the agenda, anything that basically runs the classroom for the first five minutes the first or the last 10 minutes of class. Um, especially for review days on assessments, and to quickly gather data uh, through Google Forms with Google Classroom Performatives. Um, it's fairly easy for uh, the use of Google Classroom with the students, and it's, it goes back to uh, what um, Liana said earlier about one of the posts, how it's easy, easily accessible from students that are not present in school, maybe they're sick or an emergency happened and work is already posted. So it's like a one-stop shop alongside. I also use it for reflective purposes. So every quarter I like to do a little reflection is what students are doing, what, how can I improve in the classroom? So using a Google form with Google Classroom helps a lot for students. And it also keeps me aware of what's going on in the classroom. And it's a place where I have all the information ready to go for me to reflect on my own downtime with the students. Um, so for Edulastic, what I use from Google Classroom and Edulastic, I love the fact that it's easily connected and you don't have to do any extra steps like posting on Edulastic in Google Classroom. You can go from Edulastic and um, posting it aside to students and it will already show up on Google Classroom. So that's really nice. The roster that um, that syncs with whatever you have on Google Classroom, super simple. It just, it's a one-stop place for everything, which is why I truly like Edulastic with Google Classroom. But the best part, if we go on to the next slide, I'll show you guys um, what I really like about Edulastic. So this is one of the features that I started playing with at the beginning of the school year. So it's omitting, omitting from grading. So let's say you created an assessment you gave the assessment, looked at your data, and all of a sudden you notice there's one question that really is affecting your scores. And that could be for multiple reasons. The way I look at it when I look at a question, um, as you can see on the screen on question one, the bar disappeared. That's because I omitted that specific question from grading. And then if you look at the omitting from grading presentation, there's a hyperlink there where I walk you through how to actually do um, the omitting. I set up a little video for you guys to do that. One of my favorite features on Edulastic is the section where you can omit from grading questions from a formative assignment for whatever purpose you're using it. There's multiple reasons <laughs> why as an educator you'd like to omit a question from grading. Um, so for example, on unit two GCO six, um, you'd click on actions to omit question two, all I have to do is click the checkbox, uh, select mm -hmm. omit from grading, and it gives you a prompt. Um, do be mindful uh, that once you 
omit a question, the scores achieved by the student are lost and can't be recovered. And then you would click yes, and I believe there's one more window that pops up and you uh, click yes again. When you're done, you are able to, right here it says confirm and regrade. So the student's grades would be recalculated. The reason I personally omitted this question, I really like this question because it encompassed the standard of GCO6 of multiple transformations on the coordinate plane um, for rigid motions, of course. But I noticed that the majority of my students had missed that question. So that tells me as part of my reflection that I need to go back into the classroom and reteach rigid motions on the coordinate plane from a different perspective. So students are capable of doing this on the second go around. And um, that's what I did. And then what it looks like on the teacher dashboard is for question one, before I omitted, I had again the color coded bars. Um, but as you can tell right now, it's no longer there because it's been omitted and the scores have been recalculated. So I hope you enjoyed my favorite feature. So that's one thing that I really like using in the classroom. Uh, one thing that I did forget to mention, um, this is my second year doing standard space. So when it comes to using Edulastic, I really enjoy the fact that I can search assessments uh, based on specific standards that we're targeting. And based on our curriculum, we have priority standards, also known as the essential standards. So with Edulastic, being able to filter the questions based on the standard that really helps us target. So as you saw on the video, it's a unit two GCO6. So when I create the assessments on Edulastic, they all have the standard that I'm specifically targeting. So it helps me see based on questions, okay, this is a GCO6 question, but does this question encompass the entire standard or parts of the standard? So for that specific question, that really encompass GCO6. So that's why I wanted to omit that question because I knew I had to go back and reteach from a different perspective to truly help students be able to improve their grading on the next formative where I can include that question again to see the growth of um, mastery between that standard before and after. Now, on the next slide, another feature that I like from um, Edulastic and Google Classroom is was already mentioned at the beginning, but I just really enjoy how it's once you've graded and you've done it all, completed everything that you need to do and graded the questions that need grading, um, it automatically transfers over to Google Classroom. And right here in the pink box, as you can see, these are the scores that I have. And as you can see, there's another assignment that was also posted on Google Classroom. So really what it would look like, you'd have more of these columns based on however many um, assessments you do. And then once you return it to students, students are able to see their scores and be able to move forward. And it's super simple to understand. So just, it's great for me. I love it. I, since I've tried Edulastic uh, in August, uh, in the summers when I started thinking about it, it works wonders for me in the classroom. And I hope it does the same thing for everyone else. If you're in Palm Springs, I will be presenting um, for the CMC South Conference coming up in less than two weeks. And I will be also talking about how Edulastic has helped me in the transition of uh, standards-based grading and how it really empowers teachers in the classroom and how it changes the dynamic in the classroom for students and teachers. So if you can join us, that would be definitely a great experience for you guys.